God has plans to prosper you, give you hope and a future too. So let me remind you of what you have the power to do. You can win, live your dreams, reach your goals. Hello, you're listening to the Cassandra Mack Podcast, where we maximize success and de-stress from the mess through a biblical lens. Make sure to hang on until the end. I have a special prayer that I'm going to pray for you. When you get a moment, stop by the website, CassandraMackMinistries.com. Check out our books, inspirational mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, all designed with our mental health in mind to inspire us all to live our blessed life. A big thank you to those of you who support this ministry with your financial offerings and donations. We could not do what we do without your consistent financial support. A big thank you to all the members of the Cassandra Mack YouTube channel. Thank you for being a member. So we are in the month of April. Happy birthday to all who have a birthday this month. If this is your birthday month, let us know in the comments. And we will say happy birthday to you. Shout out to those who are listening from all around the world. Please let me know where are you listening from? What country, what city, what state? Where are you listening from? So today's episode is being sponsored by my Faith Notes devotional, which is a small devotional that you can fit right in your pocket, your purse to really begin to help you set aside some time to know that you are not alone, that God is with you. It makes a great gift and it is a great comfort to start your day. Each devotional can be read and said in 30 seconds or less, and that's called Faith Notes, and it is available at Amazon. So today we're talking about four reasons why people walk all over you. And this is going to be done in four parts so that we can take our time. So if you are a person where people tend to walk all over you, or if you know someone, maybe you have a friend or family member, and you were concerned because people tend to walk all over them, make sure to uh, share this podcast with them. So here's the thing, right? When we're young, think about it, right? Like when we're in a kindergarten, when we are in preschool, right? We are often told uh, simple things like, you know, the importance of sharing, right? Don't be stingy. Share. This is very important. We are taught not to be aggressive, to keep your hands to yourself. We are taught to wait in line and wait your turn. And we are taught these things, particularly in kindergarten, so that we uh, have some, some value, some guiding principles to know how to behave in free society. But the thing is, what we don't learn while we're learning how to be nice, while we're learning how to be share, I mean, while we're learning how to share, not be share, while we're learning how to wait our turn, we're not learning about the flip side of that. Because oftentimes being an overgiver comes with its own set of issues. And as a result, many of us have a hard time saying no, speaking up for ourselves, saying, I don't like the way you treat me. That is not nice. Or this relationship is so one-sided that it is starting to drain me. And you may find that you feel some shame and guilt around putting your own needs first. And the reality of this life is you have one life to live, life as we know it on this earth. You have one life to live in your physical body, right? And your life is really about your destiny and purpose, the plans and the good plans and the purpose that God has for you. And if you were being all things to all people, sometimes it becomes increasingly difficult to tune into what the voice of the Lord is saying concerning how you should be spending your time. The scriptures say, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. And so that scripture in the book of Psalms is really about us 
recognizing the brevity of life. When you number your days, you recognize that your days are numbered. All of us have numbered days. There's going to be a day where we have to give up the body. We do not have all the time in the world. And so time is a gift. Time is a resource. Time is life. And we want to make the most of our time by making sure that we are prioritizing our primary priorities and living for God to please God rather than living to please other people. And sometimes what will happen is uh, when you have people who are takers, when you have people who have predatory personalities, when you have people who are manipulative and they go through life and walk through life using people, draining people, right? It can be difficult to know how to stand up for yourself and how not to let people walk all over you. And so we're going to be talking about this in today's four-part series. Before I share reason number one, we're going to talk about reason number one today. I want to talk about why it is not healthy and helpful to allow people to walk all over you. And uh, then we'll talk about the reasons why, right? And so what happens is when you have allowed people to walk all over you, right? It becomes increasingly difficult to say no because you have developed a habit of saying yes without thinking about, is this something I could realistically do? Is this something that I even should be doing? Is this something that aligns, you know, with my purpose and my destiny? And you do have a right to say no. So it becomes difficult to set boundaries, right? When you allow people to walk all over you, number two, your reputation uh, suffers. And it suffers because when a person is used to being able to walk all over you, you never saying no to them. The one time that you say no, they are going to tell the remix version. This is a person who's manipulative I'm talking about. They're going to tell the remix version of the story and paint you out to be a horrible person because you finally set some boundaries where that could have been avoided if from the gate uh, they understood that you had clear, clear boundaries. And so those are just two reasons, right? And or uh, reason number three, oftentimes when you are an overgiver, and I'm really speaking to the overgivers, when you are an overgiver, you will attract uh, people who are more willing to take than give, and you will find that most of your relationships will not be reciprocal. And the reality is our relationships are supposed to be reciprocal, not transactional, but reciprocal, right? We are supposed to uh, uh, reap a harvest in an area where we are sowing. And so if you are sowing into someone's life constantly and they never sow back into yours, now you may not sow the same things, but there should be a harvest. And so if there is no harvest of care, no harvest of consideration, no harvest of support, no harvest of them being there for you, but they are always harvesting you being there for them, that's problematic over time and it is going to drain you because there is only one of you to go around. A great example is when you're on an airplane, you will know that the flight crew will come out and say something along the lines of, if you're traveling with a small child and uh, the mask come down, put your own mask on first. Now that seems counterintuitive if you are a parent because your natural inclination is going to be to save your child. But what the flight crew knows is that if you don't put on your mask and you die as a result of not putting on your mask, then you can't save your child because you're dead. And so similarly speaking, when we don't put on our own mask spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and do things to fill our cup, do things to make sure that we are full, then what happens is we do die a little bit more each day, mentally, emotionally, uh, in so many ways. And so you want to make sure that you are filling up your own cup first because we are supposed to give from our overflow. God's cup runneth over. We are supposed to give from our overflow, not from our reserves. Your reserves are just for you. Your last breath is just for you. So with that out of the way, Let's look at reason number one, why we often allow people to walk all over us for those who struggle in this area. So number one, today we're talking about the fear of conflict. So a lot of times what happens is most people, and it's understandable, most people hate confrontation, right? Most people 
are afraid of calling someone out on their poor behavior because you know your people, you know your family, you know your friends, you know how they're going to react to you calling them out. Even if you have never experienced it firsthand, if you witness them uh, do a certain behavior to someone else, then you have a pretty good gauge as to how the conversation is going to go. And because most people hate confrontation, right? Most people don't like conflict. Uh, that may put you in a situation where you are hesitant and apprehensive about uh, calling someone out on their poor behavior. You might be apprehensive about setting a boundary and saying no. And oftentimes this comes from a past history of needing to keep the peace. So I would encourage you to just think about like your family history. You know, when you think about your family history, were you the person in your family where you primarily uh, had to keep the peace? Or did you witness a parent saying, don't say anything, you know, we got to keep the peace. And even if they don't use those specific words, the general idea was that you have to behave in a way to keep the peace, even if keeping the peace Peace, right with that individual destroys your inner peace and so maybe you grew up in an environment where you had to stay quiet about the horrible things that were going on around you especially in abusive and dysfunctional families so if that has been your norm if that has been part of your life experience and a major part of your life experience during your formative years then you may uh, be hesitant to stand up for yourself because you're afraid of the backlash that it is going to cause because you grew up in an environment where it was ingrained in you to keep the peace, even if it means your peace suffers, your joy suffers, your mental health suffers, your well-being suffers. And so these are just us. This is just an example. So you could have grown up, let's say, in, in a household where you had uh, a sibling. And that sibling uh, mistreated you, right? And it was uh, chronic. It was constant, right? And you may have come from a family where they almost, uh, where they almost encourage you to put up with it and just not to say anything. And that causes a lot of internal stress. If you have a sibling who was bullying you, a sibling who was always teasing you, and the message is just get over it, as opposed to sitting you both down and letting the sibling who is doing the bullying and abusing uh, abusing know that that behavior won't be tolerated, that that behavior is not kind and what to do instead. And so if you just had to kind of bite your tongue and take it, right, that creates a lot of internal stress. That creates a lot of anxiety. And so you may find yourself pretending that everything is okay in your relationships now that you're an adult with friends, with, with family, with whomever, because it has become a habitual pattern for you. And so it is well worth it, right, to ask the question, am I afraid of conflict and confrontation because of the messages and the, uh, the values that were instilled in me growing up. And values are not always spoken. Sometimes values are implied. And so uh, begin to ask that question. Get yourself a composition notebook, a journal, and uh, write that stuff down. And that will begin to help you. And be prayerful. Be prayerful about it. If you are already in therapy, maybe you're already working in a therapist, do this exercise with your therapist. And this will begin to give you some insights as to why uh, people tend to walk all over you. And once we have insight into who we are, because the only person we can control in any dynamic is ourselves, then what happens is we begin to have the information that we need to figure out how to engage someone a different way, to figure out a new way of being in that relationship. And if we even want to be in that relationship, we have information to figure out how we want to interact with that person and uh, how we can begin to set some boundaries. And so that's number one that we're going to talk about today, fear of conflict and confrontation. And we're going to stop here. And I want to give you a scripture, particularly for those of you that uh, 
you're a believer and people try to manipulate you spiritually. And the scripture that I want to give you comes from Leviticus chapter 25, verse 17. And it says, do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord, your God. And so the scripture lets us know not to take advantage of each other. And so people are not supposed to take advantage of you. And so if people are trying to gaslight you, game you and guilt trip you into allowing them to walk all over you, to steal your voice, to take advantage of you, to uh, get very nasty and hostile when you say no, and then they want to play the Christian card, meaning, well, you're supposed to be a Christian and you're just supposed to love. Yeah, but you're not supposed to be a doormat. We are not called to be doormats. And so keep this scripture handy when people try to game you and, and, and gaslight you and they try to weaponize your faith because you won't do their bidding. Leviticus 25, 17, do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. Now that, that, that word fear your God, right? Fear your God. That portion of the scripture means to have reverence and respect for God. So when we love God, right? The scripture says that, not this particular scripture, the scriptures say that Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so when we have reverence for God, that's what that means. When we have reverence and respect for God, right? And that's Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 9. Proverbs 9. Yeah, that's Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. And so... When we love God and we have reverence and respect for God, that's the beginning of wisdom, right? Not only that, we just read Leviticus 25, 17, which says, do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God. I am the Lord, your God. So when an individual is trying to take advantage of you, they're not dealing with you from a place of respect for God. They're not dealing with you from a place of godly wisdom. So do not allow yourself to be guilt tripped, gamed, or gaslighted into believing that you were put on earth to be somebody's psychological toilet bowl, their doormat, their uh, foot wiping pad. You were not put on earth for these things. The scriptures are very clear that you are God's workmanship, not people's doormat, right? So we got to know who we are. And so begin to figure out for yourself is fear of conflict and confrontation at the root of why people may tend to walk all over you. And then you begin to glean some insight and be prayerful about God. You know, what should I do? How can I begin to address this fear of conflict and confrontation? And remember, the scripture tells us, right, that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, right? So if you remember that, that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, this is why it's so important to know who we are in God, right? God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us one of power, love, and a sound mind. So look at the order, right? That's 2 Timothy 1, 7. So God has given us a spirit of power. So there's a power in you that comes from God flowing through you. Love and a sound mind. But love also means you got to love yourself, you got to love yourself and a sound mind. You have a clear mind. Your mind is clear enough to recognize when you are being guilt tripped, gaslighted, and gamed because an individual can't have their way. They want you to do their bidding. They're mad that you set a boundary and they are trying to play games with you to get you to backpedal on uh, your boundaries. And so really begin to dig deep and you will figure out if fear of conflict and confrontation is one of the reasons why you may be struggling in uh, that area of people walking all over you. And so with that being said, let us make sure that we pray. And I want to encourage you to become a member of the Cassandra Mack YouTube channel if you are not a member. Because when you become a member, specifically at the second tier or higher, you have access to the Wednesday Wellness Club, which is a therapeutic group that meets twice a month by telephone conference call. And we focus on mental well-being, emotional mastery through a biblical lens. We dive deep into issues like this. So we, we're doing a very cursory uh, level uh, talk about this issue. But in the Wednesday Wellness Club, we dive very deep. You get homework assignments 
and we really dive deep into our mental well-being. And sometimes it really is uh, worth it to invest in yourself. And so I would encourage you to become a member at the second tier or higher to get access to those club meetings because you're getting access to a community of like-minded people in a safe space. And uh, it's not just uh, me talking, but you're also able to hear the stories of other people who are talking during the conference call and who are uh, sharing. And so I would encourage you to do that. So with that being said, let's make sure we pray. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for reminding us through the scriptures not to take advantage of one another, but to respect, regard, love you, Father God, to have fear of the Lord, respect for the Lord, regard for you, Father God. Help us to remember that, Father God, when people are trying to take advantage of us. Father God, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is struggling with fear of conflict and confrontation because of how they have grown up, Father God. We pray, Father God, that they will be reminded that you haven't given them a spirit of fear, but one of love, of power, and a sound mind. Help us all to get to the root of anything that may be holding us back from your absolute best, from living the abundant life that Christ would have us live. We seal this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. If you would like more prayers like this at your fingertips, I would encourage you to pick up the book, Simple Prayers to Pray, When You Don't Know What to Say. That is a book of Bible-based prayers that uh, each prayer is organized by topic. So there are different topics, meaning maybe you're praying because you're stressed or you're praying because you need wisdom and guidance. You're praying because you need direction. You're praying because you need to manage a very intense emotion. So the prayers are organized by topic and each prayer starts with a specific scripture that is relative to the prayer point. And each prayer can be said in a minute or less. And um, it is a great way to really begin to activate a dynamic, consistent prayer life. Simple prayers to pray when you don't know what to say. And it is available at... uh, Amazon. And I do believe some of the books are available at Barnes and Noble. So I would encourage you to do that. Again, I would encourage you to become a member so that you can have access to our uh, Wednesday uh, wellness club. You can have access to the book club. You can have access to uh, the leadership meet and greet. So there are three different tiers. So when you, uh, for those who are interested in finding out more about membership, when you join, there are two ways to do it. You can go to my website, CassandraMacMinistries.com, click on the link that says membership, follow the prompts from there, or you can go directly to YouTube. So if you are listening to this from YouTube, you'll see a join button. If you don't see the join button, the link is also in the video description box to become a member. When you click on the link, you will see that there are three tiers of membership, tier one, tier two, and tier three. So make sure to read through the tiers so that you select the level of membership That is going to give you the most value. You know what it is you need. I don't. But there are three levels of membership. And so you would select the uh, membership that comes with the features that you're looking for. So if you would like more inspirational tips, tools, and teachings, you are always welcome to join me on Sundays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for our Church by Phone Sunday service. You can find out more by going to the website. That's the hub for everything. CassandraMacMinistries.com. If you are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, please do so. And uh, those are the ways that uh, you can stay in touch. And uh, if you would like to pick up our products, we have some wonderful inspirational merch that will definitely uh, lift you up and inspire you. You'll see that we have some great hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs. Today, I'm actually drinking out of my uh, coffee mug uh, that... uh, is the mental health reminders coffee mug and it has some reminders to just keep my mind with everything going on in this world in a place where i'm focused i'm fruitful and i'm fortified in who i am in god through christ so with that being said have a great day and uh, i will see you next week for part two of this teaching
When this crazy world starts to weigh on your soul Release the negative and let it go so you can grow Know that there is peace, joy and healing so you can be whole Got chains of doubt inside you tearing up your self-esteem But you got the power, the power to be free Free from everything, try to steal your destiny. The soul that.